Well, welcome everybody. Thank you uh, for tuning in. And um, we're, we're gonna have an opportunity here to preach and we're gonna get into actually uh, a little bit of what our mentor, Prophet Tom, was preaching in his last Sukkot in 2014, eight years ago. So we'll be tying uh, a good portion of this in the second portion of, uh, of this teaching with that. But let's, uh, let's open up with prayer and we'll get started. Father God, we just come before you and we thank you, Father, for what it is that you have given each and every single one of us, Father, your children, Father, your seed on this earth. We just thank you and we worship you. Darkness, we take authority over you. You are rendered helpless. You are bound up and you are pushed aside. You have no say and you have no participation. And we just speak to and we break the yoke of any darkness that is there that would come and try to interfere and break this. And the yoke, as we go through this teaching for those that need that yoke broken, because it is broken and I know it's broken and prepare to receive. We just thank you, Father. We just thank you that your Holy Spirit goes forward to move in all of our hearts, myself included. In Yeshua's name, amen. So we're, we're going to call this the fundamental fundamentals of Jehovah's seed for the separation. So as usual, I usually read from the list of the CDs that I pull from. Those are my cheat notes. I pull from Prophet Tom's material, our mentor. So I'm just going to keep with my tradition and say we're pulling from warfare and fasting for the end times, false prophets and prophecies, warfare for the mind, attitude of the heart, casting out of devils, demonology, commitment, peace, our ways are not God ways, purpose of temptation, imagination. I know it's a mouthful, isn't it? And of course, fruit of the spirit. Always fruit of the spirit. Why am I mentioning all those? Because that's where I'm pulling from. I'm pulling from the anointing that has been brought forward through our mentor's material to be able to tie things together. Because when he taught and he did things, it was seen effortlessly to him. And we're on our way to make it seem effortless for us. But we have to pull the keys from those different areas. But as we go forward today and the participation with this, um, there's going, to be, there's going to be a ton of scripture, and I'm going to be talking about the scripture while I read it. So you're not going to be able to keep up with your pages. The pages are going to be flipping. So if you would like, please just sit back, relax. I'm not giving any new scriptures. I'm pulling from the materials that you have studied and studied and studied and studied and have in your heart. So pre-adventure, one of our favorite words, pre-adventure, that you can sit back and you can take your imagination that you, your heart, God gave you an imagination for you to manage and control, right? Have dominion over, but at times close your eyes, see yourself and start adding to that image as we go forward with this teaching. I see yourself commanding both kingdoms, this kingdom and the other kingdom by what you do and how you act. And as your eyes close, add to that image. Okay. Now, someone might say, ah, you know, I don't want to use my image like that. I'm not used to this. You know, you're supposed to be just preaching. Look, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we use the mind of Christ the wrong way all the time during the day. All the time. I put my time in with the fasting, the prayer, the material to come and bring the message to be able to just take an hour and have some trust to say, you know what? I am going to participate in this. I am going to go through, close my eyes. And I know the, 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 the mothers are there and they got to watch the kids. It's fine. Open your eyes. But as you're adding and developing that image, please participate in this, please. Now that you're committed, now that you're committed to this way, we're going to tie this together. There's some keys while we go through this. The key is you're going to be under attack during this image building process based on the fundamentals of Jehovah. 
So repent because you committed. So every time that it gets pulled away and you take that thought, I'd like you just to repent quickly to yourself and go back to the image that we're creating. You're creating based off the scriptures that we're having. Forgive yourself because you're going to be under attack. Forgive others when it's presented to you to try and get you off track. Just forgive. And the way to do that is be selfless. Just be selfless. Just, just dive into the spirit here with me while we create the image of the scripture coming to life inside of you. Now, we're going to start off with some, with some materials, and a lot of the image building is going to come about halfway through and thereafter. But we're going to start off with the big promise to the future, and that starts off in Deuteronomy 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, okay, that means it's going to happen, when all these things have come upon thee, the blessings and the cursings, okay, so they've come upon you, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, right? So they're going to be called to your mind. Whether the Lord has driven thee, okay? So right there, we're going to start with, we're God's seed, okay? We have been spread into the nations, you know, back in Babel, what happened? The nations were really started. It was spread out. And the other Elohim, what? God said, here. And he says, I'm going to go get mine, Abraham. But what happened later is that seed went forward and the promises were given. The 12 tribes, they split. And they went out into the nations. Then Yeshua came. And he, when he taught, he stayed within the boundary proper of Israel. But then the Holy Spirit came, and then it was sent out to the nations. We went after the nations after his death. And then we have the generations, and here we are today, after all of those generations, and all of that seed being spread through the bloodline, through the Spirit. And then 30, verse 2, and it shall return unto the Lord thy God. Okay, we will return. So from the seed back then with the fathers, all the way to where we are today, it shall return. And we understand that's the process that we are in. And we shall obey the voice according to what I command you this day. And thy children, with all of your heart and with all of your soul, your heart, who you really are, your soul, your mind, your flesh, your will, being able to put that, subdue that. And here we are today learning to obey what he has commanded us, his children, the seed. In Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, And then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion on you. So he's going to turn it. And will turn and gather you from all the nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. So we're starting with a few, a few of us, the few that will. So obey his voice according to what he had commanded that day. And you'll turn our hearts, right? And our soul. We will. But then the Lord thy God will truly, okay, he will turn the captivity and have compassion on thee. We have to have a heart movement. A heart movement so that God knows that he knows, hey, they're in. It don't have to be perfect. But once you get into that heart movement and you've added up those experiences and you have that heart movement and you're going to move forward, God's got you. Then he can do all of those things. But you have to get and you have to walk through that precipice, that, that threshold, that going to that next glory, and that's your choices. And I think about when Prophet Tom taught peace in 2014 uh, until now, that was eight years. And that's what he had left us with. And the only teaching it after that was mikvah. But here we are over that eight years of trying to put it together, to tie all of these CDs, to put it together. And what are the fundamentals? What was he teaching? And he ended, basically, with peace. With peace. And I'm going to go on in 30, verse 4. And any of thine driven out from the utmost parts of heaven, from hence will the Lord gather thee, and from hence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. And you will, you shall possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above the fathers. We're going to have more than the fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise our heart. So we've committed. So he's going to take us. We got the fundamentals. We've been working at it. We know we can only do it with him. We can't do it on our own. Finally. So he's going to circumcise our heart 
through the things that we had trouble with, but he knows he's going to drive us through it because we have to clean up the heart. So I'm going to go on in 30 verse 6, and the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and thy seed, and, and the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Okay, you're going to live. Go on 30 verse 7, and the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon the enemies and them that hate thee, which persecute you. You've got to get we, I, to a point where your heart is just, you just know what you can only do with God. Then he's going to be able to do that to the enemies and the people that come and they want to persecute you, the prosecutors, they're not going to win because you are fully committed and God's going to work with you. You made the choice that you're not going to come back from. You're back with the seesaw, the back and forth. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do all of his commandments which I command you this day. You're not going to be perfect. He's not asking you to be totally perfect for that to happen. He's asking for you to get to the point that you are fully committed in the heart and you understand the process. You know the battle and you reach the threshold that you can go through. And he's like, I got you. Thank you for showing up. Let's go. And Deuteronomy 30 verse 10. And if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments, not the Pharisee, not religious commandments, and his statutes, again, not pharisaical, not religious like we've been taught and come out of, which are written in the book of the law. And if thou turn the hard work, right, to the Lord thy God with all of your heart, your heart's committed. It's not perfect, but you turned and said, God, it's only through you. I, I'm, I'm done trying to do little things on my own. I'm going to turn to you all the time for everything. And with all thy soul, so then all of a sudden your mind and your flesh is in subjection, your will. So your mind and your flesh, what is happens? It is in subjection to who you really are. You have to choose to do that. So then we're going to go on, the choice of life and death. And we're going to keep going through Deuteronomy here, 30, verse 11. For the commandment in which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, and neither is it far off. Okay? And then 12. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up from heaven and bring it to us? Right? So we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea. So they will say, hey, it's really far from us. We want to be able to do it. So the thing is, is it far? Is it in heaven? Is it, is it attainable? And it goes on to say in 30 verse, 11, or 30 verse 12, 14, but the word is very nigh unto thee. So the answer is very, it's in thy mouth and it's in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So we're going back, the heart work, it's in their mouth. So it's coming out of your mouth, but we have that battle with the mind and the flesh. It's your choice. It's for, like, it's very narrow down right here. It's so great. I've set the before thee life and good and death and evil. So Deuteronomy 30 verse 16, and then I command thee this day to love. Okay. The Lord thy God. How do you love the Lord thy God? You love him through the fruit of the spirit, love. Okay, how do I do that? Well, you stay connected to him. You draw from him. You ask him continually what to do, when to do, through the scriptures. You commune with him because you're done doing it on your own. And if you disconnect, you repent and reconnect quickly. So you love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, to keep his statutes and his judgments. Not the mind's judgments, not the, it's his judgments. That boundary, that law, you stay in this, it's perfection for you. And the Lord thy God will bless thee in that land and will go as to possess it. You know, you look at it from a two kingdom point of view. He's going to bless you in the land. He's going to bless you in the land, your family, and, he, and then take land and what there needs to be done in heaven. And the same thing is going to be able to happen in this earth. It's a two kingdom process. But if their heart turned away, okay, your heart turned away. How'd your heart turn away? You're cut off. You decided to take another suggestion, the lie of Satan. You are cut off. You took the thought. You spoke something that didn't line up. And what did you do? You took it. And if you did it, you're cut off. You are cut off. So you can be cut off from relying and pulling on the Father because it's the only way it can happen. It's the only way we can get stuff done. So if we're going to go do it on our own, you're cut off. 
you must repent from the sin of doubt and unbelief, the sin that you per per performed, so that you can reattach. How are you going to produce fruit, spiritual fruit from the Father, because you're drawing on Him, if you're disconnected? So you could be running around, and you're disconnected from the Father because you're in sin, and then here you turn around. You've got to repent and repent and repent and repent. If you are, you are trying to pull from him. You're trying to correct it all the time. And that's what the father wants. It's not, I repent in the morning when I pray. I repent at lunch when I pray. And I repent at night when I pray. And everything's fine. Well, you're going to produce fruit, spiritual fruit, up until the time that you're going to be sinning again. Because you can't produce it if you're not attached to him. It doesn't work that way. It's his. You have to be connected. So thou mayest love the Lord the God. Again, stay connected. Spiritual fruit. And thou mayest obey his voice. Cleave unto him. For he is life. He is the length of the days. It's not our mind. It's not us. For thou mayest dwell in the land that the Lord has swore unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Right? Swore to them all. Seed. We're the seed of that. We're the seed at the end. So what are we talking about? We've chosen Jehovah's team. We are the seed. We're with the Father. We have all these promises that have been promised, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way to us. We, we here are going to produce his kingdom on this earth to be able to pull that in. His seed. Now, as the seed, you are targeted for war. Why? Because we are trying our best to be able to produce the image of God here, and the other kingdom sees it, and then that's what they don't want to happen in this realm, so they'll come at us. So we know that we're in a war, we know that we are in a battle, and we know what? We have to figure out what is the battle? How does it work? How are the rules? How is it played? How does all this come together? But we have to what? Do all of the commandments. Use the tools that Jehovah has provided to us. It's our heart. They're battling. They want our heart. Darkness doesn't want our heart to go where it needs to go to project that image of God. It doesn't want us to cross over between the two kingdoms and be able to pull from the other kingdom and have it manifest here because it's our right, our God-given right. But we have to have dominion over the imagination that the Lord God has given us your heart, not to your mind to possess and dominate, not to your flesh. See, when God speaks to us, it comes in through our mind and to our heart. And what happens? We put things on it and then it comes out and we're trying to produce what it is, but we have things cluttered in the mind. We have things cluttered in the heart, the cake that's there because we didn't clean it out. And then we tried to put the word of God out there, the image, but we just got to dig somebody. We just got to judge a little. We just got to, and it comes out. We're trying, we're like sputtering. And I'm hoping today as we go through this, we can create a more of an advantageous image about what we're going through. Being able to close our eyes and see ourselves and the perfection that God made us, the list of the things and the about what he gave us his tools, a list of what darkness is and their attributes and things, so that we know that we continually, every second, every moment, are in a battle. But if we pull on the fruit and we stay within that, against such there is no law. That is the freedom for us to be able to stay within that and look to produce it. We understand that there was a war in heaven. God's doctrine against Satan's doctrine. The father of all lies, Scripture says. The war is fought in this earth. We're fighting it and in heaven. But the seed, the angels, us in these bodies that came for our time here to be able to do the battle, while our family is up there praying, hoping, believing that we come back to them, because we could not, depends on choice, but we're battling. We're battling the enemy, the darkness, all the lies that are presented from this world so that we can deny the doctrine of darkness and we can deny the situations that's presented in this world and we can produce what it is that the Father's kingdom was originally made for, perfection. His word and everything else is a lie. But we're going to talk about how do we battle. Remember, it has been made easy for us 
It has been made easy for us. But the word is very nigh unto thee. It's in thy mouth and it's in thy heart that we may do it. We choose to do it. So continually, we choose to what? Check what's coming in from the surroundings. Check what's coming from the flesh and the mind. Check it with the heart. Ask the Father. Deal with the Father. Pull on the fruit. Pull on the juice. And then come out properly with it. And this is where patience come in and peace comes in. What prophet pushed on us and he knew we weren't going to get it. And it's been eight years plus. So here we are pushing on the peace, pushing on the patience so that we can tie this all together to move through. And isn't it great that we're doing it at a feast time again? But let's discuss the seed, the goal, so we know what the war, the battle is for. So we're here, as we know, the angels in these bodies, but we're going to restore the pathways of old. Oh, the pathways of old in this generation and restore it. So when we do that, what happened? We're, we're made by the Father. We came down here. And it's intended for us to have the perfect relationship with the Father. But we have to restore all things. How are we going to restore all of these things? So it's spiritually first. But we're going to choose. We're going to choose to not to have it taken from us. We're going to choose to work with our family other, in the other kingdom to bring back the natural status, proving God's doctrine. See, in Galatians 5, 16 and 17, Then I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So stay connected to the Father. The fruit, that's close to the fruit. I'm always going to say that. Stay connected to the Father. Keep asking the Father. If you make a mistake because you got tricked, because the liar's tricky, then you repent immediately and run back to the Father, and you stay pulling on that, and you keep doing that, and you keep doing that. For the lust of the flesh against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And they are contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that the mind, the flesh, would. See, the fundamentals of darkness is seed in the separation. So for that, I'm going to go to Galatians 5.19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, leviticusness, idolatry, uh, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, against such, of which I tell you before, and if I have told you in the past, that they are which such things that shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So those are things that are presented to us by darkness in different ways and different manners. And here they've categorized them, but you can't inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot pull from the father and expect to hear from him. And if you're tied to this, you can't pull from the father and produce fruit of the spirit and improving his doctrine if you're tied to this, you can act like you are, but you've got to stay connected. You have to connect, connect, repent, repent. How are you going to defeat your enemies? How are you going to defeat those that are prosecuting you? You're going to repent and stay connected and stay connected and produce the fruit. Speak the word forward. And then those enemies are going to be defeated by the father and the prosecutors. Our job is to be here and believe and have faith and stand. I mean, in John 8, 44, for ye are the father, for, for, ye, for are you father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode, abode not with the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Darkness is always lying. It is always contrary. We are continually being bombarded by lies of darkness, drawing up things of the past, imaginations and suggestions. And if we take them, we bid on it, we got to repent. We have to reconnect to the father. And then what do we got to do? Move forward with him. But he is absolutely lying to us all the time, and it is subtle, and it is constant. But we know the way. 
we know that we're fighting against darkness in high places. We know that we're fighting against, what, demons? We're fighting against familiar spirits. But familiar spirits sounds too friendly. You know, evil angels. It's just, well, how can an angel be evil? It's suggests things that look like light, but they're evil. And then you're like, principalities in high places? Kind of, well, you know, really don't know those guys. But if you say demon, everybody's like, I don't want a demon. Everybody don't want a demon. So let's just bundle those all together, like Prophet said in demonology. He said they're one and the same for the teaching. Just go with it. So demon, all four. I'm just going to use the word demon. So you don't want the demon, do you? You don't want it in your life. Demon. Just say it. Demon. Just disgusting, isn't it? Demon. We don't want those things. But we are given the tools. The enemy has tools. And Prophet Mike taught uh, two weeks ago, Yom Kippur service. And he has, a, he has a list. And it was nice of him to give it to me of the things that we were to repent for. And it's like, it's a book. So obviously the enemy has a lot of tools. And when you go into the father's tools, it's very, he's made it simple. So he's got like one page, right? It's very, very simple. But some of the things that come against us, a loose tongue, lustful actions, greed, coveting, domination, contempt, contempting can control others, pride, ungodly thoughts, right? Dishonoring their parents or elders, malice, hatred, violence, defaming, what do we got here? Well, lying tongues, evil hearts, demanding of others, mocking. Wow. You know, willful disobedience, ignorance, lust of the heart, gluttony. I mean, it just keeps going. There's another page here. You got the point. And the point is, darkness is going to come in with this array of things. And these demons, okay, all four, but demons are going to suggest things, and you let them in, and they trick you, and the next thing you know, you got all these feelings, and then you're justified by these feelings, and we have to be able to learn to check. If it got in, hey, we know we're going to lose sometimes. It came in. All right. That's wrong. Father, I repent. I'm going to reconnect to you. And then what are you going to do? You're going to apply back whatever the faith was that you had applied and sent out there with the word, and then you know what darkness did. What are you going to do? Okay, write down. You write it down, right? Remember Prophet said, make the list? Remember? Make the list about the good stuff and the bad stuff? All right, well, write, you write it down, right? Write it down, how it came in, what it was, the scripture used, whatever you need to do. So you know how that one works. Happens over and over and over. And then you get a list. And you get a list of all these problems. And then guess what? you got a list of solutions. Oh, my God. And then guess what? You also put a scripture or two to them. It might apply to a bunch of them. And now you got the way to make it stay gone, the way to be able to have to apply the word to get it out of your life. But you got to do the work. you got to have the tools. So can you see yourself in your imagination there, understanding that you're the seed, understanding that you are in a war and you're in battle all the time here? You're an angel in the body. Your family's doing the work. And your job is to see the suggestions coming and to be able to know thy enemy and know how it works and go to it and keep defeating it because it's going to keep coming. You defeat it once. It's going to come back later and come back again. Why not go to your notes? Oh, I forgot. I had to spend another eight months going through that again. You make notes. Use your notes. You do notes when there's teachings. You go back to them, right? Of course we do. Make the notes. Make the notes. You know, Scripture talks about us asking amiss, right? And they're not working for us. You know, people perish because they ask amiss. The thing is, though, asking the Father for something is the process of asking correctly, right? With the Word, lined up, connected, all the way until you possess it. Asking isn't just the very beginning. Asking is all the way through. It's just not the beginning. You have to be able to protect what you ask for and so that you can possess it. You have to protect in the battle while the other angels are doing the work until it manifests. You have to believe, stand your ground, fight off all the fiery darts that are coming. And then the ones who did the work, you possess it all the way through. See, Galatians and Fruit of the Spirit 22 
The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And my favorite part is against such there is no law. You are in this. You do this. Nothing that Satan says or all the suggestions, the giant book I showed you of his problems and lies coming at us will ever win. Go to the fruit. Make sure you're sticking with the fruit. And then apply that, the word, and all that you've learned to the situation and defeat the lie, defeat the lie, defeat the lie, defeat the lie. And the devil will flee from you. Crucify the flesh, the afflictions and the lust. That's what I just talked about. But live in the spirit. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the process, the application of it, having the list, having the scriptures, knowing what you're praying for so you don't contradict it, having the lists. See, don't go with these vain glories provoking one another. So we're not going to take this suggestion and go provoke and change the unity within the community. See, a meek person is self-assured, very self-assured. But even more so, they're selfless. They're selfless. Remember to be meek. You're so assured in the Father because you're pulling from him. It's never you. And as soon as it's you... Oops, I'm attached to the darkness over here because it's about me, me, me. And that's his lie. The father of all lies. All he has is deceit. See, our mentor said a few things about spiritual fruit. Like Prophet Steve said when he opened up. Number one thing, number one thing. But today, people may, well, we're doing demonology, casting out of devils, and the fruit. So we're tying it together. It's a little more exciting, I hope. But the armor, when you go through the armor, fruit of the Spirit is there. When you go through the Sermon on the Mount, you can sit there and close your eyes and say, oh, there's fruit there, there's fruit there. Understand the fruit is everywhere and must be. The fruit is all offense and all defense at the same time. Get out of your mind the imagination of like a football team. Offense, one team, and then defense. No. In the same movement, it's total offense and it's total defense as you apply the fruit. It's just so much better. You know, and to even exemplify the fruit of the Spirit, I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Romans, Everywhere, and you go in the Old Testament, fruit, 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 but it comes to life because Yeshua talked about it. How do I know? Because it's in red. But the guys that were with them kept talking about it. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things here, and then we're going to break into the peace. Okay, I really wanted to, to lay the groundwork about this. And remember, from time to time, as I'm saying something, add it to your image, see yourself, see what's going on, okay, see the battle. See yourself in control of the battle. So either make a good tree, this is fruit is good, or else you make us a corrupt tree. The fruit is corrupt, or the tree is known by its fruit. Okay, that's in Matthew 12, 33. Right? You're one or the other. Okay? If your fruit is corrupt, it's because you're producing something from darkness and you're not attached. If you are in repentance and attached, you are eligible to produce the fruit of the Spirit. The words shall be justified by the words that you can be condemned. It's your words. Remember how we said it's nigh unto you earlier in Deuteronomy? It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. Remember how when we talk to the Father and we pull from him, we have to be able to come through the mind. The prophet talked about it. If you remember, it comes in the heart and then it comes out. We have to make sure that the mind and the flesh does not get involved. The more that you clean out your heart, the more or less involvement this is going to be. But then there comes a time when you're committed enough, you're going to easily go past it because you understand. You understand. It's like discernment. You're discerning the spirit. Now, when discernment comes, here's a hint. You have to discern it. It's just not the audible voice of God. You can hear something from the Father, but the discerning process is be patient on it. And then take it and put it out properly because you have to make sure there's no mind and no flesh and no heart issue you're working on that is attached to it so that you can be in the perfect will of God with it. Discernment takes discerning. It took me a while to learn that. You know, 
again, in Luke, same thing. You know, John is my favorite, the way John 15, 1 through 8. You know, I'm going to read this one quick, and then we'll move on. But I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch that is that beareth not fruit, he is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he is purged, made stronger. Then I may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Wow. Abide in me, stay attached, and I in you then. Good. As a branch cannot bear fruit on itself. That's right. We can't do a darkness only through God, except ye abide in the vine. So if you're not attached, you can't produce fruit. You repent, you produce it. So if you're not into repentance, and when I learned this, and I'm sorry, I'm slow, but I, I'm catching up. But when I learned this, and I was with Prophet Steve, and we were goofing around, I mean, the repent, there wasn't enough marks available space on the wall and all the numbers to be able to mark up how many times we needed to repent and repent and repent and repent. And we're like, wait a minute. I thought I was connected. I thought I was connected. But then guess what? Miracles dropped. Things changed. The prosecutors left. The enemy was defeated. And I realized all I needed to do, I knew enough but I wasn't attached long enough. And when I attached longer, the fruit I was producing was actually real because when you're detached, you try and produce fruit. It's not spiritual fruit. So you are attached. I got more done in that day than maybe I did in a couple months. What a revelation evidenced by the miracles and the manifestations that came. Amen. Ephesians 5.9. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Truth. God, you're on the God side. Truth. Over here. Lie. No truth. Right down the middle. The fruit of the Spirit is all truth. I'll tell you some quick stories. we got lots of time here. I've been in visiting with uh, the group down in uh, the island and enjoying myself. And when I got here, it was uh, the feast time and, you know, cleaning out the heart, raise an altar, 10 days of awe. And it was interesting because I talked to dad and we said, look, dad, could we do a little around the yard? I said, yeah. So we ended up pulling the weeds. We got how many loads of weeds out? This is a big trailer. It's like 20 feet by eight feet. <laughs> we got six, six loads of weeds. Okay. Weeds. Six loads. We never knew there was, we figure a load, maybe a load and a half. And then we look at each other and we're like, oh man, oh man. Because you look at it spiritually, how much is in my heart? But we were willing to talk to each other and say, let's go through the threshold. God, it's only you. And we were going through these experiences together, which is a lot of fun to do that with your dad. But it was funny, we were coming back from the loads and we would talk about this and we would kibbutz and we would go into the landfill and we'd talk about the weeds. We'd talk about this, what I'm preaching today. And uh, it was interesting. I told dad, I said, look, I was praying and it kind of came to me. It was like landmines, these weeds. He goes, how so, son? And I go, well, it's like landmines. Like these weeds we can pull out. Okay, fine. And then there's a root, Right. Okay, and, and Ernest, who preached before me, preached all about this. But I said, look, it doesn't really that scary. So I closed my eyes and imagined I was in a landmine. I dropped in the middle of a landmine, all landmines. I couldn't move. And these landmines were the weeds. They were the problems in my heart and my life. But I had to get through. But I had so much fear of this landmine. But then I realized it's my imagination and then I got rid of the fear, and then I tackled the lion mines. A few went off, and it was a lot of trouble. Some other ones, guess what? I went and I found help, and I got help here, and I got help with this landmine. And I went and I cleared the man land fight field. And you know what? I got rid of the fear. What did I do? I opened up myself to my brethren to say, look, you know what? How do I do this one? How about this one? I said, and then we could blitz. And it just so happens when we were sitting with the brothers for four hours, some of the brothers said, you know what? 
I got this thing I just learned about me. I want to go pray and work on it. Another brother said, yeah, I got to, this thing I'm doing, I got to stop that because I'm projecting something and I didn't know that that was there. Back to the weeds. It's not always sin, right? But it's sin. It's doubt. It's unbelief. It's okay. We're in the war. Our job is to go find these landmines and to take care of them so that other people don't have so many landmines. Don't be afraid. It's your imagination. You're in control. You take care of them. And what an amazing story it was. And as we were driving back another day, I learned something else. I was talking to dad and I said, look, I was praying for something and, and I just, you know, I got to get this. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. I prayed the father and he took care of it. And I said, isn't that interesting? And he said, well, you keep praying to God. It seems to be working for you. <laughs> and I say that for this, because there was a few landmines in front of the solution, the promise that I needed to take care of for that to happen. And it just so happens somebody who I was with could pray because he could get to that land, that, that promise and get that done. And then we talked about how to take care of these landmines I had to take care of. When without fear of being open and the fear of exposing the lie, because the demon, remember all four, we use the word demon because it's disgusting. The demon lies to you. And then you're so afraid of exposing the demon, you hug it and you caress it and you love it and you hold it and you hide it from everybody. No, expose it because you're not connected to the father. You're not going to get the gifts working the way you want. You're not going to get the blessings. You're not going to produce the fruit because you're going to love the demon. You're going to hold the demon. You're going to caress the demon. Just expose it. Deal with it. And guess what? It doesn't have that lie over you anymore. And guess what? It is scared as soon as you expose it. Because the only way it's going to cling on to you and convince you to allow it to be clung on to you is if you don't expose it. You know it's a liar. Don't worry. No one's going to judge you. Guess what? We all got our own demons. It's okay. And if we learn about confessing sins to one another one day, and as we do, Guess what? It's not the way that the TV taught us. It's not the way that other religions taught us. It's being able to sit and let the spirit work and let it come and deal with it one another. And guess what? Let it go. The brothers and sisters are here to help one another. It's a body of Christ, not the individual of Christ. Now we're going to get on to the peace section. We got just enough time to get through this. So love, joy, peace, okay? It sustains you. It's the front cluster of the fruit. And you need it to be ready for warfare. I'm not going to talk about the other ones because you've got to have these ones in place. Now, speak faith into a situation. We talked about this two weeks ago. And then you're going to speak it out. You're going to wrap God's word around it. And as soon as you do that, all the kingdoms know. And it's out there. You're already a target because you're trying to emulate the image of God as best you can. So what happens? The purpose of temptation comes in, the trial of your heart. So what happens? James 1.4, but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and enter wanting nothing. Okay. So after Love, you got joy, you got peace. Love, you're, you're, you're connected to the Father. You stay repentant. You make a mistake. You repent so you can pull on the Father. Joy, your love, your praise, the Word, the Scripture, all of those things build up so that you have peace. But you need to have a faith project for peace to work. So for peace to work, you got to have a faith project so you put something out there. And now when the temptation comes and the issues and everything else of life, guess what? It is the patience that you have to have through the battle process. You got the beginning process. Remember before we talked about being able to ask and ask correctly, have your love, have your joy, have your peaceful so that you can go to battle in your faith project. And so that you can have the patience there sustained by your peace. You're in the battle. You know what? It's getting a little tough. It's drawing on you. Go back to the fruit of the spirit of joy, praise, worship, speak the word. Joy is, see, the fruit of the spirit of joy is Yeshua, because we know about his peace, his peace he left. 
but he couldn't have his peace if he wasn't the living word, the joy, applying the word. And you can't have anything if you're not loving the Father, staying connected and drawing through the system, the juice, the power that is his, that he freely gives to us if we play right. Patience undergirds faith until the result is manifested. Patience. See, patience, warfare will happen. And if you do it properly, you're going to get you into a position where patience is going to work. You're going to be able to use patience. Patience is in the warfare. Patience is used to gather fruits to be able to move forward. See, where warfare happens, darkness suggests to your mind, right, and to your senses, anything contrary to your faith. They went out there. They know. They understand. So they, anything contrary to your faith statement. So you undergird your, your, your patience, right? The peace with your patience. Your patience is the support. The peace is what bends, right? When it gets low, fill up on joy. We talked before about going back to the Father, continuing with the love, and repent, 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 and then re redo the faith and the faith project. But in the battle, go back to the joy. Have the praise music that you like. Have the scriptures that you like. Talk to one another about the word, fill up on it, cut all the other things out that darkness would have you participate in with music and other things to supplement that, the lie. And your joy is full. Guess what? All of a sudden, the peace will be there stronger and you're going to see more and more and more things just drop in your life that you asked for and it's going to drop and it's going to drop from heaven and the angels are going to bring it and bring it because you're asking correctly all the way through and you're putting the pieces together and you have that list beside you and that list of how darkness works and how this one works and how the scripture works. And here's the thing about joy, smile. It's a spiritual fruit, but it's joy. You know that you know that you know you have the solution. You just have to get your will by choice, your mind and your flesh to shut up long enough, subdue it, so that you can take the time for five minutes to go to your list. Oh, yeah, that one, eh? Da -da -da, scripture, da -da -da -da. bye, and move on. That's the work? These are the works we got to do? Yeah, this is the work you have to do so that you can perform the works of Jehovah. Warfare. Warfare. That's what it is. It's fruit of the spirit in action, tied together in that system that we're talking about. Back to the image of yourself sitting there, and as you're closing your eyes and tying stuff into this image and adding to it, see yourself in all authority because you're connected. See yourself looking for and hunting down darkness and defeating it with the word of God. See yourself lifting up and praising God through the day, hundreds of times a day. The psalmist said seven times a day. You know, Paul talked about being able to, you know, I pray continually. You know what? Just stay connected. Just put it, whatever you got to do, just stay connected. Get around people that just want to stay connected. And we have to fix our things in our heart, but that's okay because we can confess our sins to one another, not the way the TDB taught us, but the way of letting the spirit work and loving each other. It's his kingdom, fruitful, producing God's doctrine in both kingdoms, drawing his down. And it's going to take many of us to draw in his kingdom once and for all. We're not doing this alone, and we're doing it together. It's all of us, one by one, two by two. Hebrews 10, 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which ye have great recompense. Payment, right? So keep your, you, you got this patience thing. Keep your confidence. Okay, we're talking about joy now because you got the reward. We're going to ask all the way through. Hebrews 10, 36, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, that ye might receive the promise. We've did the connection. We did the love, the joy. We applied the faith. We sent it out there. We put the word. We stood and waited for the battle. Patience, right? And then we received the promise. It's what we do. It's part, part and parcel of why we're here to prove the Lord God's doctrine. And we know in the end, 
that we prevail, drive tons of people to jealousy because we learn the simplicity of God's doctrine and how to do it together because you need the fruit working together. See, the will of God producing the image of him, resisting the devil, spiritual fruit, love, joy, peace, full. I can't say it enough and I won't stop. Ready for warfare, patience in the temptation, refilling your love, your joy, and your peace as required, warfare, offense and defense at the same time, so that your patience is there and easily dismisses the devil. The fear, no, I'm not afraid of the landmines in my life. You can't, I'm not going to hug you and hold you and hold you, demon. You can't trick me no more. Not speaking doubt and unbelief, right? Don't take the thought saying it. It's like we said about discernment. It comes in, don't take the thought saying it. Even if it's from the Father, make sure it's going to come out correctly. We always think that it's just about darkness. Patience has the courage to tell Satan that you're the father of all lies, right? God's word is supreme continually, right? Your tongue is like the outer of a ship. It's so easy to steer your life. Well, that makes it simple. We just got to control our tongue and our mind. Thank you, Father. I guess all of these problems and all this other stuff that I constantly worry about all the time, I just have to worry about my mouth. Oh, but how hard is it that the flesh just wants to jump in and say something? And Hebrews 10, 37, for ye a little while that he shall come, will come, it will not tarry. Every time I say the word tarry, I think I'm like tarry. I have to say it. It's funny. But Hebrews 10, 38, I just get that image pop in my head every time, like Terry. 10, 38, and same as Ernest, because you're reading the Bible about Ernest, it's the same thing. I don't know why. It's just funny. But Hebrews 10, 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So, again, going back to the simple process that we've been talking about, you got the faith, you've done all the work up front, you did the ask properly, and then guess what? If you don't have the faith, God's going to draw back from you because you failed, you disconnected. He can't keep giving to you because you, right, disconnected. Then he backs up and says, I'm over here, come connect. See, faith is by hearing and hearing the word of God. You fail through the mouth, repent, 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 reattach to the Father, spiritual fruit of love. I ain't going to stop saying it. Guess what? Apply the scripture, get back in, remain attached. Hebrews 10, 39. But ye were not of them that draw back unto perdition, right? So don't be like those. What is that perdition thing? Well, demonation, hell, abyss, punishment. Because when you disconnect yourself, that's what you're drawing towards. Get an image of that. Get an image of what you're pulling yourself towards because of this shiny little nice lie that gave you something in this world, not the other world, and you take it and you hold it and you caress it. It's taking you to demonation, to hell, the abyss, and punishment. See, I'm just trying to get you to understand myself and preaching to more than anybody. The image that we can sit and create when you, when, you, when you listen to that scripture and you describe that way, it really makes us understand, no, no, I don't. more disgusting about what sin is and the broadness of it and more of the reliance and not self, meekness to attach to the Father. But it's been given to us. You know, faith is going to have to come for peace to show up. It has to. So faith has to be there. You need a faith project for peace to do something. What can you have peace about if you don't have faith in something? Interesting. Your faith project. See, patience encourages fearlessness, right? Patience, fearlessness in God's word. Before that darkness that comes, remember all four, we call them demon, comes. And before it can even finish the suggestion to your mind, you stop and you go to the word of God. You don't let it finish. Our mentor did it all the time to us. Remember those days? Why does he keep cutting us off? Why does he keep cutting? Why does he talk all the time? Because we were petting our demon and going blah. So what do we do? Don't participate. Don't let that seed inside of you. 
Keep the fruit of the spirit of love through the connection. Refuse to cast away your confidence in his word. Keep the confidence. And that's patience at work, keeping the confidence. People have never been taught how to put this together. How simple this is between what the prophet, our mentor, has laid out in his CD series about the simplicity of the process, tying it all together, what the fruit really is, how to have faith, how to keep faith, how to battle, what darkness does, what we do, what we have to protect, and what we're going to say and have our angels do, what we pray about. All offense, all defense. Do not speak doubt and unbelief. But once we can figure out how this works, once you actually do it, remember Prophet Ted about making, putting the tape over your mouth? Okay, that's the beginning. This is the thing that comes after that. This is the thing about tying it together and watching it work and do it with your spouse, do it with your kids, do it with your community. And guess what? Watch the anointing come. Watch the miracles just drop. Watch manifestations. Watch things go there. Because we don't have to worry about our, having our food. We don't have to worry, Scripture says, about our coat or the sandals. We, yeah, we have to know a few things. We're not going to worry about it. You know why? Because all that extra worrying time, what are we tied to? Darkness. God doesn't want us to worry. Cast that away. Attached to him, focus on him, where we're going, what we're doing, draw on him. And guess what? It's just going to come. It's going to drop. It's going to be given to you. And you're going to put the faith project out for things. And those things are going to be given to you because you're busy about God's business and the simplicity of it. We are the seed. We're here to prove his doctrine. Evil angels, demons, familiar spirit, principalities, all one and the same. See, in James 1.22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Right? Going back to discernment, how that comes in. Being able to apply the process that we've talked about over and over and over and over again here. We have to be able to test the spirits with scripture. We have to make sure that they're not bad. We have to make sure that it lines up with the word. And like Ernest had talked about earlier, make sure it's at the right time. Talking about patience. Once you've done it, sit. Let the anointing work. I sat with Prophet one time, and we were talking about something, and I just get going. And he's like, Matt, just a sec, just a sec. Like, okay, okay. He's like, I got to wait for the anointing to catch up. Meaning, you said a lot. The anointing's working in the other realm. And he had the patience to send the confidence to sit there we waited, and we waited, and we waited. And then he just started talking to me, and there was a solution. He didn't put himself in it. It was the most amazing thing that I finally understand later, and I didn't understand it at the time, because my mind was running with an opinion. Let's see, James 125. See, but those who looketh into the perfect law of liberty, again, I go there and I say, against such there is no law, that's fruit. And continue with therein, right? So you have peace and patience. He being not a forgetful hearer, so you're focused on the process of producing fruit. And in the faith situation we talked about, but a doer of the work, that's the doer of the work, right? You're walking through the battle. That man shall be blessed. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. Focused on that. Blessed in his deed. You're going to get what you ask for. It shall come. Not because you're letting your mind worry and everything else about all this and speak all this stuff to disconnect you and everything about that problem. Because you did everything that you can to stay connected and let God take care of it and let the anointing take care of it instead of your mouth, which it can, interfere instead of supporting. Yeah, but I just said this. Then guess what? You disconnected. And then you're going to keep wishing and hoping and praying, but you're disconnected. Oh, it's lunchtime. I reconnected. Okay, you're reconnected. But did you, did you, for the sin and doubt of unbelief? Did you repent for that? See, again, I'm trying to narrow this. Sometimes our minds are going to say, yeah, but this and God says this. Just, just keep it narrow, like a child, the faith. Just keep it nice and tight and in here. It's okay. God's going to take care of it. See, in, in James 1.26, And if a man among you seem religious and bridleth not his tongue, and deceiveth his own heart, the man's religion is in vain. What are we saying? Exactly that. 
if something comes in and his tongue went and said something that shouldn't because he lined up with darkness and all this book of evil suggestions, and then he went out and came against it, you know, the doctor and the lies could have been an angel of e an evil angel coming as an angel of light to get you to contradict yourself, but it sounded religious. You know, it's just a demon. Don't hide it. Don't let it lie to you. And as soon as you can do that, as soon as we can do that, guess what? We're not offended. And it goes right back to when Prophet talked about the fruit of the spirit about pride. Pride is set there as an indicator. You can have pride in God or you can have pride in darkness. And that devil, that demon needs you to go to that pride and say, look, lie about me being here. Otherwise, you're going to be exposed and your pride went the wrong way. It's okay. I'm not telling you to tell your kids everything about your past and everything else and go crazy. No. Come on. Put your head on straight. It's about doing it properly. See, this is what it's all about. And I'm getting, it's been an hour. Bear with me. And thank you for that. And as we put this image together, see, patience will have the courage to tell Satan, you are the father of all lies. I don't accept that. God's word is supreme. When prophet talks about peace, he was going down the shopping aisle. And guess what? All of a sudden, when he was learning about controlling the thoughts of his mind, guess what? He just yells out, get away from me, demon. You know, like he had Tourette's or something, just started screaming. You know what the funny thing is? He was learning and he was applying. He was putting his whole heart into it. And look what he did, just like we can. See, it's past hearing. It's putting it together. It's doing and doing the warfare and understanding the simplicity of the fruit. The armor, being able to tie in and understand how to apply the faith, have the patience, right? And the commitment to be able to see it to come through. Asking all the way to the end correctly and knowing that your brothers and sisters know this too. And they have the image and they see themselves doing it and they know the tools. You're sharing notes. Guess what? All of the other stuff. And I'm not coming against anything that anyone teaches or anything that's going on. But if you can't do this, if you can't put this together on a regular basis, there's a probability that what's coming in, the bucket, is coming in and it's getting turned a bit. It's getting shaded a bit. And it's coming out because you have to have all of this together. But all of us, like Ernest talked about earlier, are going through this. Apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors, the elders, everybody. Everybody's learning. Everybody's learning the process. Everyone's cleaning out their heart. God's not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of faith and faithfulness. He's a respecter of staying connected, going through the fruit, applying the faith process all the way through, asking correctly all the way to the end and having it. That's the respect. And then here you have what you need. You shall have it. You shall have it. Do this. And then cut out the Facebook. Cut out this. Cut out that. And do all the other great things that God is showing you. And I thank God he is. And put that into that time. But do not neglect what we're talking about here. This is a base case which you're going to make better in your own life because I'm only talking about it from my perspective and your perspective for you is going to be a better perspective than what I am. But it's something to use to launch from. It's something to launch from. See, patience has no fear. Has no fear. we got to get a hold of this. This Sukkot, this time, this feast time, I believe, and as the prophets have talked, Something's happening. We're going through a threshold, not as an individual, as a group. There has been enough hearts turned to the Father to say, Father, and then for us to be able to move forward together so that the Father can say, yes, yes, now is time. We're going to be able to unleash all sorts of miracles and manifestations to my kids, and they need it now. And you need it now. Satan is a liar and the father of all lies. It's interesting. I've still got a couple more pages, but you know what? I'll end in this. It's just a demon. It's just a demon. And please get used to saying it because it's a disgusting thing. And you know what? 
expose the lie, the lie that hiding in you, familiar spirits, evil angels, you know. See the spiritual gifts manifest then. You're an angel in this body. The anointing in your life is an angel who does and performs the work. We are here as angels in these bodies to be obedient, to be able to have subjection over, right, dominance over our mind and our flesh so that we can perform this process that we talked about properly so that angel can perform whatever miracles, whatever gifts, whatever needs to be done for knowledge or word, whatever it is, it does it because we lined up. We didn't do it, but that's a lie from darkness. We have the ability. We have understand the battle. We understand the war. We understand the tools. And we understand it's in our heart and it's in our mouth and it's not far from us. We got this. Focus on it. Focus on it. Continually stop and ask Yehovah constantly in situations and people and things and your faith projects. And guess what? You're going to win every single time. So your imagination, if you stop, and if you did, and I thank you for, for, for creating that image as we talked. And as you leave here, please keep that image up. Build on that image. See yourself in perfection as connected to the Father. See yourself understanding when darkness comes and understanding more. See yourself understanding and winning in these faith projects because you know how to do it. See yourself communicating with your brothers and sisters about it. And see yourself not or lying and holding on to the demon the familiar spirit, the evil angel, because you have been given everything you've already won. It's just how are you going to walk up to the podium? You've won. You've won. We've won. And we have crossed over into something I am so excited about for each and every single one of us. Every one of us. Remember, repentance, forgiveness, and being selfless. Let's end in prayer. Father God, just thank you and worship you, Father. The yoke was broken. Fed into the hearts of people, my heart. Being able to now move forward, build on, build better, build stronger, and improve one another in the fruit of the Spirit, Father. And being able to ask and ask correctly. To have the faith projects work and the miracles manifest. I thank you for that. And I thank you and I thank you, Father. To you and your holy name, we give all thanks. In Yeshua's name, amen.